wild ride it's been for Kenneth Walker so far in 2023, and the season hasn't even started yet. Coming into the year, everybody was in love with Kenneth Walker. I had him as a top 10 running back for 2023, and then April happened, and Pete Carroll happened, and then Zach Charbonnet happened. And right now, there's a lot of uncertainty around this backfield, to say the least. You know, if you look at Kenneth Walker last year, he was really good. 65% of the opportunities, he had almost 1,000 rushing yards. Uh, he was 19th in yards created for touch. He was 8th in breakaway run rate. He was 10th in evaded tackles. Among 48 running backs with 90-plus carries last year, Walker ranked 11th in PFF's rushing grades, 13th in elusive rating, and 16th in NFL next-gen stats rushing yards over expectation. He was really good last year as a runner, which is a lot what we expected, right? That's what we, coming out. He was one of the best pure runners last season coming out of last year's draft, and he, and he hit all those marks. And if you look, really, once he took over as, as the lead back here in that backfield, you know, he was the RB8 uh, over the final 11 healthy games without Rashad Penny last season. He was really good. He averaged 19.7 carries, 84.6 rushing yards per game, almost a touchdown per game and a two and a half targets per game once he took over this backfield. Now, the question is, is how is Zach Charbonnet going to fit into all of this this year? Zach Charbonnet is not some small little back. Like it would have made sense if Seattle would have drafted like Devin A. Chain or something like that. Somebody that could mix in, kind of be that satellite back, but they didn't. They went out and drafted a player who is very similar to what they already have in Kenneth Walker. Six foot one, 220 pounds, 194 carries, 1,358 rushing yards last year for Zach Charbonnet at UCLA, 14 touchdowns. But he also had 37 catches for 321 receiving yards. He was it was 14th in yards after contact per attempt. He was the 44th in missed tackles force per attempt and fifth in carries of 15 plus yards. But he is a much better pass catcher out of the backfield than what Kenneth Walker is. My my guess of the way this this backfield is going to break down uh, is is going to be Kenneth Walker is going to get the early work and I think it's his job to lose the you know the goal line work for the time being. We saw this last year with Rashad Penny. I mean the the Seahawks were fine with Rashad Penny being the starting running back until he got hurt and I think this is the situation here for Kenneth Walker. Now I do think Zach Charbonnet is going to be involved. I think Zach Charbonnet is going to be utilized more as a pass catcher, third down back, and will get some opportunities you know inside the red zone. So overall, like you, you look at Kenneth Walker's ADP right now, and he's RB 17th or 45th overall. That's not a crazy ADP for where he's coming off the board. I think some of the risk is already being baked into his cost. And uh, honestly, I mean, this this on paper looks like one of the best offenses in the in the NFL this year. Like this is a top 12 offense with everything that they have. If Geno Smith can replicate what he did last year, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and obviously the addition of Jackson Smith and Jigba is, is really good news. This offensive line, I actually think, could take a pretty big step forward. They were 18th in pro football focuses, run blocking grades last year, 30th in football outsiders adjusted line yards, and 24th in ESPN's run block win rate last season. Now, they, they hit home runs on Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas last year. They're off to tackles in last year's draft. They invested in the offensive line again this year in the fourth and fifth round. And so I think there's a lot of depth here with this offensive line. This offensive line could actually improve drastically. PFF does not agree right now. They're, they rank them 26th heading into 2023 season, but I think that it's possible that they could get into that 15 to 20 range this year and be a much better unit if Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas can continue to develop like they should. And so overall, the way I look at this backfield, right now, if you look at Kenneth Walker, where he is currently being drafted, and he's going around guys like Aaron Jones, Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce, J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, I can make a case for some of these guys taking him over Cam, Kenneth Walker. But all of these players have red flags. None of these players are clean players and clean prospects of guys that you're just going to love, right? I love Damian Pierce, but I can easily make an argument for you know how, how things could go sideways. I can make the same argument with Miles Sanders or Aaron Jones or J.K. Dobbins or Cam Akers. Like all of these guys, and that's why they're being drafted where they're being drafted. And so that is needs to be taken into consideration. Now, I will not blame anybody if they say, no, I'm passing on Kenneth Walker. I'll just take Zach Charbonnet, who's going at the back end of the ninth round right now. Like, I don't mind that thought process either. I get it. There's a lot of risk here. And, that, you know, with these running backs that are going in this range, this typical dead zone running back range, you know, that we see here, you know, I think there's there. But I also think there's a, a scenario here where everybody's burying Kenneth Walker. and He could end up being like a Josh Jacobs light type situation here where everybody's forgotten about Kenneth Walker. Everybody's cast on the side because of the situation. Because remember, we were doing the same thing last year with Zamir White. Uh, when it comes to Josh Jacobs and any running back that in the Raiders backfield, we were trying to put ahead of Josh Jacobs and ended up just being Josh Jacobs. And I think that could be a situation or a scenario here with Kenneth Walker. So all that being said, I don't mind drafting Kenneth Walker at his current ADP. 
Yes, there are some running backs that you can make an argument for in this range, depending on how your build comes, that, that you can make an argument for. There's also some wide receivers in this range. TJ Hawkinson's going in this range. Amari Cooper is going in this range. So if it's a little bit too rich for you and you'd rather wait until the fifth or sixth round where some of these other guys like Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, Damian Pierce, Miles Sanders, all these guys are going after Kenneth Walker, I can understand it. And if you'd rather just wait, take the, the lower risk investment in Zach Charbonnet in the, in the ninth round, I totally understand that too. I do think there's a lot of upside here still with Kenneth Walker. I think he's going to be the lead back and it's going to be his job to lose. But all that being said, let me know in the comments section below, what is your thoughts on Kenneth Walker this year? Are you comfortable drafting the cost or would you rather just wait on Zach Charbonnet, who's currently coming off the board in the ninth round? Let me know in the comments section below. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.